Hi there, Intune friends. I'll start with a question here that you see. How much ransomware do you think was payment in 2022? And you have four options here. So ransomware is hackers who encrypt your files and then ask for money so they decrypt so you can read your files. So the files for the hacker have no value, but for you, maybe it's your whole business. So I, again, no idea how they can get to know this number, but that's the question. Think about that. So in this video, we're going to do something related to this. We're going to look at vulnerabilities in our environment and fix it, or should I say remediate it, because we're going to use remediation script again. One of the best way to secure your environment is to update your software to the latest version so there are no vulnerabilities where hackers can take use of. So maybe your security team will come to you and ask, hey, are we running the latest version of the software? And maybe you look at your packages and you say, yeah, I packaged the latest, but are you really running the latest one? You might have users or a local admin who installs software that you doesn't know about. Then you want to know about it, and then we're going to look how to fix it. The fix could be maybe update, package, or simply uninstall if it thinks we don't want in our environment. Before we jump into that, the answer to this question is the third one, 450 millions of dollars. It actually went down from 2021, where it was ne nearly 700 million dollars, but it's still a big industry. Okay. With that away, let's look. So number one, we want to look what software do we have in our organization. So we go to our Intune console here, and then we go to apps. So we start to click on apps. Then we will look on monitor, and it's going to come uh, discovered apps here might take a while to show up. It went very quick uh, here actually, but sometimes you get these three first and you have to wait one or two seconds. But we want to go to discovered apps. Discovered apps have one little downside. It collects every seven uh, days on uh, computers and it's seven days from enrollment. So not all machines uh, report their version at the same time. So even if you fix a machine, let's say you update the um, GIMP here to uh, a new version, it can take up to seven days until you see it here. So this data is definitely not live. And unfortunately, I know of no way how to force a client to sync. I don't think it's possible. If you know it, please let me know in the comment. I would love to know that, but I haven't found anything. I don't think it is possible. Okay, so we have five pages. That's very little because I have only two Windows machines. But if uh, you're an organization with uh, a few machines, you're probably going to have 35 or hundreds of these pages. So you want to know what should you patch and update. So let's export this. So when you export this, it's going to be a CSV file. Open great in um, a lot of programs. I will use Excel. So here you have two options. You can export all the discovered in aggregated data set. It's going to look more like this. Or you can take raw data. This one is pretty good too, because then you get all the devices and what they have installed. But I'm going to use this one. I just want to see a bit this uh, look here. So I'm going to click yes. And then export is in progress. Oh, there it came. Perfect, so I'm going to go to this folder and I'm, it's a zip file. I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to open this one in Excel. Let's open up this CSV file in Excel. That's a new look. I'm very interested. Got it. Okay, so here we have a few columns. I'm not so interested in uh, column A. I'm actually going to delete it because it's just the application key. So I'm going to delete that one. Then I'm very interested in the application name. I'm also very inter interested in the application version. Uh, device count is also interesting. The two last one, I'm going to delete them. You can keep all. It's just I like to keep it here. So I have very few in my organization. You, I have only two Windows devices. You should hopefully have a lot more where it's more interesting. Uh, we also want to, I'm going to put the filter on the first one. So I just click on the first row. 
and then I go to data and on data here I have filter so I'm going to apply a filter so what I'm now going to look after what I'm interested so let's unselect all so I'm interested in uh, GIMP and for some reason GIMP put the version number in there I'm also interested in Git so here now we see all that we have probably we should be interested in Google Chrome an edge i would actually in your organization i will sort the device count and you're interested on the one or most installation there's no reason for me to sort here because well it's two and one uh, it's a lot of microsoft uh, apps not so interested in those so i will bypass the microsoft uh, mozilla firefox interesting notepad why not and put putty uh, vlc should be interesting and zoom also I'm going to take three of these and we're going to remedy and fix uh, three of these. So uh, since we have the same version here, uh, Git we have only one. No, we have two different of Git. So let me sort on uh, uh, name instead. So we do that here. I'll sort up there. I'm going to expand the selection. Yes, I just want to have it the same name. So let's fix GIMP. Git have two different versions as well. Google Chrome have different version, but in my next video probably going to be how to manage Google Chrome in a special way. Uh, apps have the same. Firefox have different version. Not sure why this one is um, on the right side. Oh, because it doesn't have a dot. Doesn't really matter here. So let's fix Mozilla Firefox, Git, and GIMP those three software so we want them to have the latest version so with help of this we know which version we have installed and you can from here take the list and again the device count if you have a, most devices have a old version you probably want to look into that first so you get most uh, effect of your um, investment of time Okay, so how do we gonna fix this? You might also have software that you totally want to uninstall. Uh, I'm fine with all this software. Then you would do an uninstall script and send out to the whole company or at least target those that you don't want to have it. Uh, you could package these. Uh, I'm not gonna package these. Uh, I have videos about how to package uh, Firefox and Chrome and Zoom and VLC. So I'm just going to do a remediation script to make sure that these have the latest version. So let's start with GIMP, but you're going to see we're going to use a template. So it's going to go very quick to do Git and the Mozilla Firefox. But let's start with GIMP. So I have done a few videos about the WinGet and the remediation script. But I'm going to still go through every step here. So if you have seen the video, you can fast forward a bit. So first we want to have some scripts. We need two scripts. The first one is detection script to detect does the machine even have GIMP? And the detection script will also see if it doesn't have the latest version, then all is good. If it doesn't have, if it have GIMP, but it's not the latest version, then it's gonna call the second script, which is called the remediation script. So let's do those two scripts first in the PowerShell, and then we upload it. And I have pre-made a few of those uh, scripts, but I'm going to explain every step of it. So let's start to uh, PowerShell ISE. And let's run it as admin. And it's probably have something from previous session. Yep, VLC detection script. Actually, these are the ones that I want to use, but uh, it's exactly those I wanted to use as a template. So we, uh, I have modified them a bit from uh, previous videos. So we're going to go through these and I'm going to put this script in the description of this video so you can just uh, copy. So we're just going to change. So we said uh, GIMP to see if, let's say, GIMP, we can put it capital, needs an update. I'm still the author. The date is a bit different. Today it's the 2nd March. That's March. 
So the only thing we need to change is the app ID. So you must know the app ID or you can Google it. I happen to know that it's a gimp.gimp. And here's the friendly name that's just for us. So friendly name, I would just put GIMP. So if you wanted to know the app ID, you, you can be good down here. So if we just run Winget, so Winget is Microsoft's uh, command line tool. You can install, you can uninstall, you can upgrade. We will use this only to upgrade. But if I put Winget search and then do ID, I can just put GIMP and hope it finds something. It's gonna go out and download and say, hey, here, here are the names. So you can have a GIMP nightly. I don't know what, exactly what that is, but here we found the IED. So that went a bit fast. I just do an arrow up. So you do Winget search IED. I could have put uh, something that we're not gonna package now. Uh, we're not gonna do VLC. If I put VLC, I can find out the IED. Okay, so it's videoland.vlc, so it's not always vlc.vlc, and you can do that for a lot of software. So that's how we found out the GIMP, and if we uh, look a bit at the GIMP here, what version is the latest? So the latest is 2.10.32. If we go back to Excel here, what did we have? We have 2.10.0 and 2.10.18. So my machines definitely have old versions, so I will want to update them to 2.10.32. So we know that this script's going to do good for two of my machines. So we did the comment. So all these brackets, they are just comment. They are not part of the script. It's just to explain for your future self or if someone else is in your team is looking at this. Then here we put some variables. So here we put GIMP. So this is the ID, the one we found here, and this is just the name. We could put anything here. But this one must be exactly like this. Even the capitals have to be the same. And what's good with this template is that when we're going to do um, git, we just need to change here and here, and we can keep the rest. But I'm going to explain the rest. So here we have winget, how to run winget. Unfortunately, if we would only run uh, winget uh, upgrade and the command in uh, Intune, it will not work. And I have my recent video explains that it is has to do with um, variables. So I do quickly if I do an echo of the path. So I explain this pretty quickly, but there are video if you really want to know more. Uh, this doesn't work because I'm in uh, PowerShell. Uh, let me quickly open a CMD. So I will explain this. So if I do echo, what I wanted to do before, echo path, these, when you execute anything here, if I type uh, something that doesn't exist, this file, if I hit enter now, it's first gonna look, is this file here on the system 32? If it doesn't find it, it's gonna look here on the C program, program files, x86, common files, Oracle, Java, Java path, and then it's gonna go through all these. And since this file doesn't exist even here, it's gonna fail. But if I put winget.exe, winget.exe doesn't exist under system32, so normally it should fail, but it does exist under here. We can go quickly here, copy. So if I do CD here, and then we do uh, dir, you're gonna see at the bottom here, there is a uh, winget.exe. So even though there is no winget.exe um, uh, where I were before, if I go up one here, here there is no uh, winget.exe, but still if I run it, it works because it's in the path. The problem is again, Intune run as the system account. So if I run a system, and run winget, it's not gonna find it. So all that for just explaining why we have to help the script to find the location of winget. And in my previous videos, I had um, uh, more lines, but I got a great comment from uh, um, on one of my videos. So I stole his line. I, I changed it little, but it's the same logic. So thanks for that tip. Uh, so it was, 
you basically put the script so it's in the location of Winget. The problem with Winget is that it's update also. So that's why we put an asterisk here. So basically what we do is set location. That means move yourself in the file system where path. And then it, here we put dollar environmental program uh, 6432. And what is that? Well, it's nearly always C program files. So we could also remove this and put C program files. This would work also, but it's a bit more correct to do this way in case someone have installed the program file somewhere else on the D drive or like. And I'll, this program uh, W6432, we can find that as well. So I'm going to clear this one. It's a bit messy. But if I put just SET set, you're going to find this one. So we said it was called program W6432. That is equal to C program files nearly on all machines. You can find this at D colon. You can even rename this if it's another language. For that, it's actually good if it's another language. That's actually the best uh, reason. For example, program files, if you have a Swedish one, it can be called something different. Uh, files in Swedish is feeler, so maybe it's called that. I haven't run a Swedish OS for ages. So this, I, I still prefer this one. If you know you run only English, you could put C program files. And there I did something dangerous. I so this one gonna go to this location. So you see down here, I'm on C Windows 32. If I run only this line, so I select line 10, and then I click on this little paper with just the green, it's run selection. It will not run the whole script, only what I've selected. So look down there, it should now change to that directory. Yep. And the asterisk cover uh, this version. So it's 1.19 now. I think it was 1.18 in one of my videos. So it do update. That's why you can't hard code it here and put 1.19 and the number. Because when it um, update, that's going to break. So, but the asterisk is always going to find it. Spending a lot of time on that. But this script now finds Winget. Once it's in Winget, we're going to want to run a lot of Winget. Um, commands and we want to save it in the variable why because we're going to compare it further down in the script later to see if the local installation is as new as the one we find on the internet if it's older then we want to update so we run winget we list all that's installed locally e means exact that means that the id here have to be exact the id and this $dbn app ID, that's a variable who point up here. So that's why it's important that you, we put it direct, uh, correctly here. So it's actually going to replace this with gimp.gimp. .gimp. And then since we want it silent, oh, I'm dangerous here, we put accept source agreement. Then it's going to list. Let's uh, run this command on uh, uh, my machine. I actually have... Uh, GIMP, and I probably already have the latest on this machine. So if I put here uh, GIMP.GIMP, .gimp, so I just can run it as a one-liner. So I run Winget, I list, and then it's going to see. So actually, I don't have GIMP installed on this machine. So I so the value of GBN local installed software is going to be no installed package uh, found. Well, it's actually going to include these two also in the variable. Okay, so we look what we have locally. Then if it's not installed, then it, it quits here. So you see here, no installed package found. So we look if this variable we created is equal. The minus one means take just the last line. That means we take only this, not these two here. And then we exit with zero. Very important. So we're doing the detection script. You remember I mentioned we do two scripts. The detection script run first. If there's nothing, if it's not installed GIMP, there's nothing to um, update. So then it's going to exit with zero. If it exits with zero, all is good. Nothing to update. If we would put exit one, then it's going to happen stuff. If it exits with one, then it's going to ask the remediation script to fix this. 
And fix this in this case means update GIMP. But if it's not installed, we don't want to do anything. So then we continue here. Okay, this line, uh, pretty advanced, a bit more difficult to explain. Uh, so now we're going to check if available exists. So when you run this command list, if it finds something installed and it exists a newer version, it's going to create on the, the second line from the bottom the, and the third line from the right, it's going to call it available. So I probably have to show that. If not, this video won't be so good. So um, let me just run a command to see what needs to be upgraded on this device. And then I'm going to list that. So uh, Slack needs to be updated. Perfect. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to do a clear host down here to make some free space. I'm actually going to go down here and clear host again. So here, if I now run winget and we said list, and then I'm going to list another software than GIMP because I don't have GIMP. So let's say I list the uh, technology Slack. Then it's going to say that there is a newer version. So if you remember what I said here, it's going to take the, uh, sorry, I said it wrong also, the third line from the bottom. So this is the first line from the bottom, second and third here. And then it's going to go the second one from the right. So source is the first one and then available. If this one exists, then it's going to take that value. Actually, it's the doesn't matter if it exists or not. If it says version, if it doesn't have a new version, then available is going to be gone and the second one's going to be version. So this available just take whatever is on the third, third line from the bottom and the second one from the right. So pretty advanced here to follow. So don't worry if you don't capture all this. Just know that here we are looking if available is here because if available is here that gives us an idea aha there is a new software update that we want okay so uh, and I'll, i can run the same on something that i actually have updated and then you will see available is not there video lan dot vlc i have that and i know i have the latest so you see here now the third line from the bottom, one it's still this one, but the second one from the right is now version. So that means we don't have to update. And if you remember before, it had an available. So available only shows if there is an update. I hope that went through now. So now we look if this value, GBN uh, uh, available, the one we pick up here, if that one is equal to available, perfect. We know that um, uh, GIMP is installed but it's not the latest version because that's the only reason available shows up then we exit with one and again why do we exit with one because that's going to kick off the remediation script and the remediation script is going to run to update if it shows version like uh, down here vlc then we know it's installed uh sorry then we know it's installed and is the latest version so we are good and then we can exit with zero, so we don't need to run the remediation script. There is another, if uh, this one is totally empty, if the command doesn't give any feedback, then we also exit with zero. That means it's not installed. That shouldn't happen. That's just a safe up. So I think I went too much time on this script and still I could spend so much more time. Again, don't really worry if uh, you didn't catch all. So now it's going to go faster in the video. So I'm going to save this one as. And here I have a few files. So I'm going to call this one, actually not that name. I'm going to call this one GBN update, which software? Well, it's GIMP. I put .gimp and detection. So this is our detection script. Don't worry, the remediation script is going to go a lot faster because we have explained this. Uh, I'm going to change the date still, so it's the 2nd uh, March, and let's do lowercase a, that looks good. So we just need the variable of the software, and you remember that was GIMP uppercase, very important. And here we have only two lines, 
This line you might recognize, it's just to help the system account, which Intune runs over, to find um, a WinGet location, and it's here. And when we have that, we're going to run WinGet, and here's a new command, upgrade. So we're going to upgrade what? E means exact the ID. The ID is this variable. What is this variable? Well, it's gimp.gimp. We want it silent for the user, and we want to accept everything so it's silent. So this will update the GIMP. So that means the remediation script runs, then the detection script will run again. And at this time, it will notice that there is no available and only version. And then it says it's installed in the latest version. So we need to save this one. And again, I want it a shorter name. And I'll just call this one gimp.gimp. So now we have something we could mass produce. We could just change the uh, DBN app ID to uh, Mozilla and all that and do, and we're actually going to do that. But first I would like to upload uh, this and run. So now we have the two scripts, but we have to go into Intune and actually use them. So where is that? Very difficult uh, to find actually. It's under reports. And when you are on the reports, you go endpoint analytics. And I have used the proactive remediation pretty much in my videos. I totally love it. So you will see a few scripts here. We cr click on proactive remediation. And now it's so simple. We have nearly nothing left to do. So here we just click create script package. And we can call this one update GIMP to the latest version or something. You can come up with something better. Update uh, GIMP with help of Winget. And I'm the author if we go next. So here we have settings. We need to, two files. First, the detection file. See if I can find it. I sort on date, modify. Here's the GIMP. The detection is here. And the only way so the detection script runs first. The only way it calls the remediation script is if this script exit with one. And the only way it will exit with one is if it get available when we run Winget. That means it's installed and it, it exists a later version. So if this one exit with zero, it ends there. But if it exit with one, it's gonna run the remediation script also. And that's the one who actually update or it says the command is upgrade to the latest. Okay, we have some more down here, I think, to click. Yes, we want to run this script in 64-bit PowerShell. Yes, please. The others, no, we haven't done any signature. So go next. Scoop tag, we don't need. Assignment, I'm gonna assign this to all my devices. So you have followed my uh, videos, you would probably, assign it to a group, your ring one, your test machines. But I'm confident that I only have two machines. So daily, why not? But now when testing, I wouldn't mind run it every hour. That's the smallest item. I don't think you can put uh, 0 .f uh, uh, 0.5 here. It doesn't accept that. So one is the smallest. So every hour. And that's too much because once it's updated, so I am just do it. I'm going to go back here later and change it to maybe every week. I mean, it takes very little uh, resources from the device to run it, so you can run it often. So this one is done. We are basically done now. So now we update the GIMP. I just want to show how fast it go now to do the other ones. So if we go back to our Excel here, we said we wanted to do Git also. So let's see what the um, Git command is. So, well, I can use uh, my... Um, uh, CMD here. So if I do winget, I can do .exe or without, and then I do a search, which ID, if I just put git, see how much different git there are. Wow, there are a lot of stuff have git in their name. Uh, I'll see, actually, I want the normal git one here. So if I wanted only one, I could say, uh, no, I, can, I can't actually. So <laughs> uh, let's go with git git. It has to be uppercase. So I'm going to copy this and let's go back to our scripts now. And now we're going to see the power of this template, which you're going to find in the description of this video. I just need to change here. 
uh, git git and I'm gonna do git here as well here it doesn't really matter what it says but nice to have git and then I'm gonna save this one I'm gonna save it as and just gonna rename rename it to say git git instead yeah I maybe paste it here git git that's the detection the remediation is this one the same I just changed this to uh, git git and then I do another save as and uh, name this one as well after a while you get a hang on it uh, gimp gimp I remove gimp gimp and put git git so now we have the scripts we go back to Intune we are already in proactive remediation I create a new package this time I forgot what I said before uh, up update the uh, git automatically to the latest version pretty sure that's not what I did um, update the git with help of uh, winget.exe we go next again we look for our detection script here we have for git and then we look for our remediation script git we scroll all the way to the down and we say yes we want 64 bit we go next no scope tag assignments again you should probably target uh, select a group and then uh, take um, some validation groups here I don't want it daily I want an hour still might not be able to see the result in this video I hope so create and now we have one to update the git and gimp update so let's do one for uh, mozilla firefox also so again i want to find out the id i'll put just firefox i know there's going to be a few so they it exists a few for firefox but the one we want is just mozilla.firefox well the one i want and 110.01 let's see if one of my machine didn't already have that 110 so they none of them have the latest actually okay so we have the id we can go back to our script and mass produce these so now i paste uh, now i do it backwards i start with the um, uh, remediation script because i stand there to win sometimes so i just change the app id again and you can call your files different than me of course it's just names Say this one and the detection script I'll change that to um, Mozilla Firefox again that's just a comment same here this name is not so important either and I misspelled it so Mozilla Firefox and here I'm gonna paste in the ID and now we got uh, for Mozilla Firefox as well save as gonna, uh, save it as Mozilla Firefox here in the name uh, I did the save the other one already so we are done so we go back here we create another script package uh, update Mozilla F Firefox to win some time I don't put any description should but uh, not really needed then we browse our detection script and that's the Firefox detection and then we have the remediation in case the detection script uh, uh, ends with exit one then this one kick in we scroll down we put yes we go next no scope tag we are dangerous we assign to all devices again I don't recommend to do that not so much bad can happen if you would do that but uh, yeah always do validation and now this one is done also so now it can take up to um, uh, one uh, hour until uh, this kicks in so uh, I'm gonna post the video but before that I would like to speak about something that I haven't activated in my uh, tenant yet so um, I don't know why it's not working yet but uh, on uh, a real one it works if you have the right license 
So I wanted to speak about another one, overview of inventory of Microsoft 365 apps. So if you go to Microsoft 365 apps admin center and log in, then you come here. And if you dare click on inventory, then it's going to ask you to enable it. And it started to work. Perfect. It didn't work one hour ago. Excellent. Okay. Then I don't need to do, use my screenshots I have prepared. So if you have, I have only two devices. I hope the other one going to show up. So you can see all your builds. And you're going to see those who have not been supported. Well, I can show that one with the screenshot. So, for example, here, this is a screenshot from uh, Microsoft. You can see that unsupported, this uh, tenant have 346 builds. And it looks like if you hover over here, you will. Now it's a screenshot, so it won't work, of course. But then you can see how many are unsupported. You also can see how many are 32-bit and 64-bit. I strongly recommend 64-bit. The only reason I see to run a 32-bit is if you're running a very old add-ins that doesn't work on 64-bit. But yeah, always run 64-bit. That's good for Excel. So here I hover over. It's one. It's running this. I hope my other one's going to check in. Oh, that's good. And I run only 64-bit. I can see which add-ins people have installed. So very useful. I'm going to put this URL in the description. Go there. Go to inventory, enable it. It says it can take up to 24 hours. For me, it took uh, more than 40, 48 hours, but I'm on the developer. And if you click on health, you can see some very interesting things as well. OneDrive sync. See if this one haven't uh, kicked in yet. No. Nope. Okay, so I use my screenshots for this one then. So here are my screenshots. Let's start with uh, this one. Uh, so if you have one uh, drive sync, you can see how many have sync errors. You can see known folders. So known folders are desktop and uh, documents and those folders that you can redirect. I have a video how to do that also. So that if you lose a computer, your desktop is still in the OneDrive. And which version of OneDrive have installed. Next one's going to be uh, animated GIF. To just show what more you can see if one have a sync error, you can click there and see all your devices and why they fail to sync. So here you can click on one and see why they have 11 errors. My um, uh, experience is that when OneDrive doesn't sync, it is because someone have used a character that isn't supported. It can also be that they have no space left, but very often it is the invalid character that they don't like to sync. Or the file is in use also. If it's a, a, a file uh, that is in use, I was going to say a PST file, but no one used that any longer and you shouldn't. But the files that are written to that are in blocked, OneDrive can't sync all the time. But I'm adding some uh, bonus material. So I went in and look at on my devices here and they, oh, even more happening now. So it's got Git. Mozilla Firefox, still not GIMP. And if we wanted to look, uh, so here comes the bonus. If you, and this is pretty advanced. So you remember in some of my videos, I had uh, troubleshooting. So all the logs are under program data, Microsoft Intune Management Extension logs. And when you deploy Win32 apps, you look at Intune Management Extension. And I don't seem to have CM Trace installed here, so I will open in Notepad. But Agent Executor is actually the one who executes remediation script. See if I have a CM Trace. I do. Perfect. I prefer. So, CM Trace, we have also a video. It's a nice tool. Um, and here we say Git is installed on in the latest version and error none. So, where where does this run? So you see here it seems to run out of uh, C Windows. I don't know how to resp uh, <laughs> pronounce that. IME cache, IME cache, health script. So if we go there, we might be lucky and see the scripts are still there. It's not going to have our name. So I open a new tab because I'm on Windows 11. And on Windows 11, we have tabs. Oh, we have multiple. So when it's underscore two, that means it's the second version of this script. So if we go, well, I take the first one and yet yeah, you have to be admin. 
So you see it have renamed my script. One is detect and one is rem remediate. Let's uh, look at these. I'm going to look at them in Notepad++. So we should recognize our script. Yep. Uh, no, sorry. This is not the one we did uh, this time. This is another one. Uh, let's go. So it should be one of these then. So let's check this one. Remediate. And open. Here is one of our script, 2nd March when recording this. So this have run, this was the command who ran to update uh, Mozilla Firefox. And yeah, we can, um, we could have uh, looked at the detection script. Let's do that. So this should be the detection script for uh, Mozilla. It is our detection script for Mozilla Firefox. That ran, so it seems to work very well. So if we continue here, uh, this is the second one. I don't remember modifying a script, so it's probably an old one. If we go in here, we should find another one. I just looked at the remediation script. It's the most interesting. See if this is Git or GIMP. This is GIMP. So should we guess that uh, the last one is uh, Git? Rem remediate and edit. It is Git. So then, just for myself, what was the other script? Probably one we have done a video for before. Uh, could oh, it's probably VLC. So VLC maybe. Uh, this is VLC. Here we, the variable should have been higher up. Yeah, we used this one in the. In, uh, in um, a previous video and he, this we replaced with a one-liner so you see here this uh, we resolve the path but in this video thanks to uh, one of my uh, uh, viewers who put the comment uh, you could do it this way so one-liner nicer let's see so we know the scripts have run but I got a feeling that it's not reflected here yet so Intune is not that fast up ah! Here it have actually one have reported back. I'm going to remove some columns so we can see better. We don't have to see author. That's me or Microsoft. We don't need status either. I happily keep the rest. So here we get some stats. So for Firefox, totally one have remedied. So it noticed there was an issue and it's fixed it. It noticed there was an issue with GIMP. It fixed it. It noticed there was an issue with Git. That means it's exit with one. And it fixed it. If you see issue and then reoccurred, that's very common. That means that the remediation script couldn't fix it. And there are many reasons for that. Uh, Winget, for example, sometimes can't upgrade because Winget installed with an MSI and your previous installation was with an exe file or for other reason. Then you can modify your remediation script to uninstall the software first and then install. So there are many ways. Excellent. So we start to get some data in here. We're going to get the other one, but you will just see number two here. So nothing more to see. So we're actually good there. I did want to show one more stuff in here. So here was where we could see um, inventory. Just want to refresh uh, just in case my second machine show up here now too. No, still only one. Yeah, I don't know why this takes so long time. But under health here, we looked at OneDrive Sync, very interesting. But security update status, we can put the goal what we want. So remember here, now I have only one. But if we go on security update status, it says 100% are up to date. Easy when you have one device, it's going to be 0 or 100, right? But you can set up the goal. So for example here, so I want to have the latest one, and it's listed here which one it is. I want to have that after, what's the max? I don't, 30 days. Well, after it had been released and some automatically update, I want that to be, let's say two weeks, because we don't want hackers to enjoy 14, more than 14 days to uh, uh, attack my office. And what percentage? Well, I would like to have, um, I think pretty low, 85. Don't go 100. Uh, well, that's, a vision, not the goal, but you're probably not going to get 100. So I'll save that. So that's going to be my goal now. So now here is um, 
it's gonna look for and right now i'm on the goal when my second machine either i go 50 or 100 percent of course so that's what i wanted to speak so i do quick a recap so first for vulnerability you need to look what do you have and what do you have you go to apps monitor ah here you got a little delay discovered apps here you see all that you have if you're just looking for one app like vlc you search here of course but if you want uh, easily to view everything then you export it and you can export in different way i export it in this way and then we saw what well we see all the software now i have filtered so if i remove my filter uh, we see all our software we can sort on the device count and see which version. If it's not the latest version, we can create our remediation script, which we're under report, endpoint analytics, and proactive remediation. And you can do one per uh, uh, software. There is a limitation of proactive remediation script. I think it is at 200. If you reach that, you could script. So one script look for multiple software. You could have one who look for VLC, Firefox, GIMP. But until you reach 200, I would uh, prefer that you do one for each. Why? Because then you get stats. So some gonna fail. Remember, I put this to all devices. I would uh, recommend that you put to your ring zero first your test users and then then you put to your ring one and then you put to everyone so this got became a fairly long video remember all the scripts are in the um, description so use those copy and use them and test before you put in production hope this uh, video have been useful for you and uh, see you in another video have a great day